Okay, so hi again to those who were part of the first webinar. For those of you who were not able to join me, obviously I already said, um, there's um, hopefully going to be a recording, or there is a recording, sorry, for you to access um, the first one. But um, just to introduce myself, my name is Cecilia Alvarez Tavio, and today, um, uh, I'm just gonna, like I said, uh, show you some uh, some videos and continue talking about the importance of social communication and engaging with your child in daily routines, etc. Um, so the content of this webinar is is direct, directly related to research that I have been doing, looking at best ways to engage and interact or communicate with young children with autism, and more specifically. Um, I wanted to provide families of young children um, an understanding of social communication and play skills and the importance of promoting these skills early at home. Um, uh, so like I mentioned in the previous uh, webinar, many young, many young children with autism are receiving numerous hours of therapies like you know, ABA, speech, OT, but once they go back to the routines at home, with their caregivers, they miss out on opportunities to continue learning. So it was important to me to educate parents so they could continue the work at home. Um, better yet, I also wanted them to enjoy their time with their child and learn how to best ways to engage uh, with their child. So today I'm gonna be going over um, the early gestures and communication skills that a young child could develop early on and that you as a parent should promote um, and reinforce or reward during um, your daily routines or just while playing with your child. I'm gonna be showing you video clips of some of the families that I worked with who learned how to use these skills during play routines as well as other routines at home. And I want to acknowledge these families really who have graciously allowed me to use these videos for teaching purposes. Um, I hope that with these quick webinars, you can get started. Um, I will be um, also including some resources at the end um, that hopefully uh, will allow you to continue learning and access more videos and samples. Um, I also invite you to reach out to your card clinician if you have any questions or need further resources. Um, and I would also include the, the contact information for to our card offices so you can connect with um, our person there and she, if you don't remember who your clinician is, she will um, uh, inform you. And if you're new to CARD, I also uh, invite you or encourage you to call and register. Um, okay, so let's begin. If this mouse is working. Okay, so last week um, I spent some time discussing the different social communication and um, so the different skills that children need to interact with the world around them, um, starting with early gestures to talking. Um, I highlighted the importance of parent involvement in learning these skills and teaching them to their child. Um, I introduced the acronym GRASP, which is what I use to teach parents to remember which skills they need to reinforce while playing or engaging with their child with autism throughout any really activity or routine of the day. I talked about the importance of routines when teaching a skill and uh, some of the common features of a routine. And some of these features are the fact that routines are repetitive, so it allows for multiple learning opportunities. They're also predictable, they become predictable. Um, so the child knows exactly what to expect. And it also reduces that anxiety caused by not knowing what to expect. It's also a great opportunity for taking turns, um, which is a great social skill to promote, um, especially you know, during the preschool years because um, they're gonna be doing a lot of that when they get into a classroom. Um, and every time the child has the opportunity to engage in the behavior that we want to promote, you're going to take um, advantage of natural reinforcers. So having access to a toy during a play routine or having access to something they're requesting. So this is what we call natural reinforcers, natural reinforcers, sorry. 
So with repetition and continuous use of natural reinforcers, your child's behavior, you know, it is intended that it will increase. The visual that you see on this slide um, refers to behaviors that I want caregivers um, to remember to use while engaging with their child. Uh, I'm not going to go over them because I, I did that last, last um, webinar, but um, I will reference to them while I show you the clips. Um, so let's talk about grasp. So if you recall from last week, um, I use GRASP, the acronym GRASP, <laughs> to remind parents um, of those behaviors that I want them to engage in and reinforce while interacting with their child. The first letter of the acronym G of the acronym GRASP is G, and it start, stands for giving. Giving happens at about nine months, and um, it begins to develop from their actions and their reactions of others. Um, children first learn to take objects from, from you or from take objects that they want, right? And when, as they learn to control their hand movements, they learn to give objects. Um, and around this time is also um, the time they learn to shake their heads to indicate no by turning away food they don't like and, and then look back at their caregivers. So um, it is an important gesture that naturally happens um, when um, things occur in their daily routine. Um, so uh, let's look at some of the training videos. Um, in here, you'll, you're going to see parents learning to reinforce their child's giving. Um, if you recall by reinforce, I mean using um, a natural consequence or a positive consequence that um, right after the child engages in the behavior, in this case, giving. It could be verbally acknowledging what the child wants or needs, or it also could mean giving the child what he wants or needs. Um, so that is what I mean by, by reinforcing that behavior. So um, let's take a look, and I'm hoping that you're able to see, since I'm sharing my screen, I'm hoping that you're able to see the videos and, and hear them. So I'm gonna try and raise the volume on these. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the first one. Mom is really good, and, and parents are like this. They, they really can anticipate what their child wants, so they're, you're really in tune with your child. So all, all I want you to do is be in the lookout for those, those um, social communication gestures that I want you to um, reinforce like giving. Because um, the more you practice this in your routines, the more your child will repeat them. Um, so let's take a look at this video. <laughs> You want the pink one now. Let's do the pink one. Open, open, open. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Oh, yes. oh, mom spilled it. Ready? One, two. So um, I kind of extended that clip. I mean, you're definitely seeing um, mom being really in tune with um, what her child is looking at and um, she's waiting for that eye contact before she um, activates the toy or blows the bubbles. This is what you see at the end, which I don't completely show it, but look at how the child is looking at the mom. And also um, before that, you know, she immediately, when the child grabbed the pink bottle, um, she's like, oh, you want the pink one now. So it is... Um, it is, um, um, with practice, you're gonna get really, um, you're, you're gonna become an expert and you're gonna make sure that, that you reinforce all of these and, and um, describe everything that your child's doing. So the next one is during a peekaboo uh, routine and um, uh, I'm just gonna show you and talk about it later. Let me um, see. Which one do you want? You want the green one. Okay, ready? Mom's gonna hide. Mommy's gonna hide under the green blanket and you're gonna find her. You're gonna find her. Where's my, yeah, you found me. V, 
Bibi's gonna hide. Where is Bibi? Bibi's gonna hide. Oh, there she is. Yes. Thank you. Now mommy's gonna hide. So if you notice in this uh, turn-taking um, interaction, they're playing peekaboo, but um, you know it's clear that the child really likes to hide mom. So in this routine with practice, mom has is making sure that the child has her turn. So um, she hides the child, and then it's mommy's turn. But instead of um, mom putting the blanket on top, she is sort of waiting. And it's one of those visuals that I, um, that I presented at the beginning and I talked about last webinar. It's like, wait a little bit to see if the child, once they learn the routine, they're going to grab it and give, you know, the, give mom the blanket, which she did in this case. And mom said, oh, now it's my turn. So um, it's, it's being really in tune with your child and looking out for those behaviors um, that, that are really important. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry guys. Now everything's going crazy. Let me try and go, next slide. Okay, so this video is actually um, me modeling to our cur uh, one of the caregivers that, were, that was participating, how to reinforce the giving. Um, so, um, the way that I, that I used to run this was more of a coaching model. So I would um, model the behavior um, and the interaction to the mom, and then I would give the mom a chance to, or the parent, a chance to, um, to imitate what I did, and then I would give feedback to the mom. So this is just me showing her how to interact with the child in this case. Um, I'm actually modeling a lot of things, but uh, giving is very clear. So hopefully you'll be able to see um, in this video, um, me modeling or reinforcing giving. Go! It's a ball. Yeah, it's a ball. You're showing me the ball. You want to do it again? Oh, it's your turn now. Oh, you want me to do it? All right. Thank you for giving it to me. Ready? <laughs> so, um, so I mean, there were a lot of things. Um, I allow the child to have his turn. I, um, I kind of describe. Oh, now it's your turn. So it's that turn taking. Then I waited for the child to um, try it and realizing that he wasn't going to be able to activate the toy, you know, I waited for that giving and um, he gave it to me and I'm like, oh, you want, you need help. I, I can help you. And then I activated the toy. And so he was having a blast. <laughs> um, you know, he's also has great skills. He's talking and he's pointing, but, um, you know, it was a um, Again, it was more like his interactions were more like he was on his own playing with the toys. And so it, this is a great um, opportunity for mom to learn how to take turns and how to engage him in play. Yeah. Oops, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, so the second letter in the acronym GRASP is R. And it stands for reaching or requesting. Um, and reaching happens at about 10 months. And um, this is when learning happens through exploration and experiences with others as they reach to take an object and to be picked up. Um, the video that you're gonna see next uh, demonstrates a parent who has learned to look at, out for these um, grasp behaviors and reinforce them. So if you recall from the first webinar, there are a few behaviors like that visual that I showed you in the first slide. and um, so, so in this case, mom um, uses it to her advantage. Um, she uses providing choices, which is one, one of those behaviors that I want you to um, always uh, re use it to your advantage because um, she's encouraging her child to, um, to reach or request for, for the object. And once it happens, she not only verbalizes to her child what she wants, but she also gives the child the object. So um, reinforcing that behavior. So let's take a look at that. You like this one? Yeah, okay, good girl. Okay, ready? Let me come back. 
So it, these are very quick clips. <laughs> but, um, you know, providing choices it gives a child the opportunity to um, practice that skill of requesting. And then um, it's also um, mom is naturally giving her what she wants. So um, she, in essence, she's reinforcing that behavior. So the child's going to continue reaching and requesting for things. Um, eventually you want to, um, the next step will be having the child say, I want, you know, and, and, and vocalize a little bit more. But, um, you know, you go uh, gradually increasing um, the requirements for <laughs> reaching. All right, so the next, okay, the next letter in GRASP is the letter S, and it stands for showing, and showing, um, it's really, um, and an advanced uh, skill, it starts happening around 11 months. And this is when they really begin to show signs that they're motivated to share interests with others. Um, and it is so important to reinforce um, because this is exactly what we want to increase. We want them to come out of their detached world and be part of the social life of the family. So um, showing is very important. They learn to hold up and show the object to get others to look and notice what they're interested in. So in the next video, um, the parent acknowledges when the child shows her the object while they're playing. Um, she's really doing a great job at interacting with her child, um, building uh, stacking blocks, I think. Um, but the child actually, um, there's two opportunities when he shows um, something to the mom and the mom even though she's really wanting to engage with the child she acknowledges the showing so she does a good job at um doing that so let's take a look look at the lion look at the lion you're showing me the lion look at the elephant yeah look at the blue elephant Got a nice tower. We gonna crash it? It's, it's, a, it's a baby lion. Yes, it's a baby lion. You put it on top. Okay, so he actually, you know, tried to uh, show mom three things, the lion, um, the elephant, and then again, she, he's holding actually um, the block and he points to look at the big lion or the baby lion. I forget what he says, but um, these are all um, really important skills to be looking out for and, and engaging. Um, again, this is a child that's talking and pointing and he's got a lot of advanced skills um, and mom is making sure that she doesn't miss any of them. So she reinforces them. Um, <laughs> Oh, I, okay. So the P for grasp, the last letter of the acronym stands for pointing. And um, typically um, children start using what we call open hand pointing um, around 12 months. And this is the type of pointing that you use to draw attention um, of, others, uh, of others to, to things that, that interest you. Um, they become more intentional when they start using sounds or vocalizations or just grunting um, or any sound just to make to emphasize what they're they want you to um, they're sharing that they want you to look at. Um, the other type of pointing is um, starts about 14 months and is what we call the index finger pointing and you know it's it's important because um, they start using the the more specific or what we call the index finger point to reference to things at a distance so it is definitely a way to request for things but it's also and most importantly a way for the child to share interest in whatever they're pointing to so it gives them the opportunity to look at you and back at the object they're pointing and this is um if you recall i think i mentioned um this skill um, in the first webinar this is what we call joint attention this is why it is so important that you reinforce it um, by acknowledging what they're referencing to. Um, joint attention is one of those pivotal skills that is going to um, help uh, your child uh, develop language and interactions later on. Um, 
um, when they start using the index finger is when they also start using the sh gesture and um, which is a, an early form of nonverbal communication. So in the next video, I am uh, modeling a caregiver how to acknowledge or reinforce pointing. Um, I, I do use um, providing choices as a trick to, to, <laughs> to encourage the child to choose and point. And in this particular, this particular child is developing his point from an open hand to an index finger. So if you notice, he's um, first reaching for the object, then, you know, kind of, uh, you know, pointing with his open hand, and then he defines it a little bit more. So let's take a look at it. Yay! You want to use the red one. Now it's my turn. I'm going to use the green one. Okay. So um, that was a quick one, but uh, if you notice, uh, right after I, I provided the choice, he reached for it, then he opened his hand, and then he defined the point. So these are things that you probably don't even notice, but they're important when you're um, trying to develop those nonverbal ways of communicating. Um, <laughs> so, um, I want to share some tips. I mean, this is a quick webinar. I know you have limited time um, being at home, but um, I want to share with you some tips on how you can work on developing social communication with your child. Uh, make sure that you're always thinking of establishing routines that will allow your child to learn these behaviors and make your time with your child fun. So the first one is just imitating the sounds your child makes and see if he or she will repeat what has been said again and thus taking another turn. You know, playing those what we call the sen sensory social routines uh, or those social interaction routines, which are the tickle games, the peekaboo games, any hiding game, any face-to-face. -face. So after your child learns the routine of the tickle game and starts to anticipate that you will tickle, Try pausing and waiting to see if your child looks at you or touches your hand or to get you to start tickling again, for example. Singing familiar songs um, and, and leave a part blank for the child to say the word or finish the part of the song. Um, I, I mentioned this a, a little bit on the last webinar. Um, not only songs that are familiar and repetitive and which kids learn, I mean, this is... Um, Schools do this a lot, and books like you know Dr. Seuss books and uh, Eric Carle books, they all have a repetitive um, a, a rhythm to it, right? So if you keep reading, they're predictable. The child learns, and this is a great way to promote more talking or turn taking. When, um, when your child reaches towards or points at or shows you or gives you an object, look at the object and at your child and comment about the object or name it. For example, when the child points to a dog, you look back and forth between your child and the dog and you can comment about it. You say, oh, big dog or brown dog or the dog goes woof woof. <clears throat> um, when pointing, showing, or giving an object of interest to your child, look, um, look at the object and, and look at your child and talk to your child um, about the object. When um, reading a book, um, take turns pointing to um, interesting uh, pictures or, you know, model, um, model the pictures and say, oh, I see a pig, and you point to the pig and then, you know, um, you can ask your child, where's the pig? And the child will like, you know, maybe point to it or something. So with practice, they're going to obviously um, learn um, the whole routine. Um, you know, and again, I, you know, use visual strategies. We, um, you know, visual strategies, what I mean by that is, um, you know, um, play, use, um, items or, or, or toys or things that your child likes and follow, follow his or her lead. Use pecs. I mean, sometimes pecs are a good way of um, 
communicating or um, sending your message across um, and um, offer choices. Those are good ways to um, um, send your message across. Um, I also included some uh, references at the end for more ideas. Um, I don't want to leave um, before telling you about um, the card services. A lot of you are aware of them, but just know that uh, we, you know, part of our services is consultation. And I know that we're um, all at home, and, but feel free to call your consultant and either by phone or you can set up a video conference and reach out to them because um, also I encourage you to visit the website, but we have a lot of resources that um, you may think that um, are not, um, that you know, the fact that we're all in, in, at home, we're not gonna be able to help you, but hopefully just having someone to talk to also um, is very, um, it's very, um, very positive and rewarding. Um, here's some of the references. Um, uh, the First Word Project and Autism Navigator, they provide, Autism Navigator provides uh, courses for parents to learn a little bit more about these social communication um, skills and they're um, free. <laughs> so, um, but you have to register to take those courses. Um, and the first words project just talks a little bit more about those um, early signs and all um, the the gestures and the nonverbal ways of communicating um, that your child should be doing and that you should be encouraging. Okay, so um, here's the card contact number. I'm going to um, activate my camera in case anybody has a question. Um, <laughs> Let me look at the questions. Okay, so I'm just gonna look briefly. So one of the things um, that is mentioned here is PEX. PEX is uh, what we call the picture exchange communication system. Um, and um, it was created by um, these researchers that were looking at um, not only um, helping children to um, communicate better. Um, the reason it's called exchange is that the idea was that the child uses the pecs, the visual, in exchange for what they needed, right? And so um, the idea is for the person that receives the visual to um, model the word and give the child the whatever they're requesting. Um, but, um, you know, it has, evolved a little bit and you've seen PECs being used for for schedules to organize and uh, create some structure in the classroom or at home. It, it is a, a great resource to have. Um, you can access PECs um, through Google or the internet has numerous. You can just enter autism PECs. Um, um, you know, like I just mentioned in the chat, um, I've had the training and it's uh, it, it goes through stages, right? So first it starts with just exchanging the visual and then um, it continues with, um, you know, making sentences and making sure your child um, is vocalizing or verbalizing. Um, the idea is not for them to rely on the visual, but, but eventually to have them say words. Um, let's see. Okay, I mean, so a lot of them, um, I have a, a, a parent asking other ways that um, you could give rewards, um, either verbal or nonverbal for positive behavior. Um, you don't have to really um, be very loud. You can just, the, the, the idea about natural reinforcers is that um, if you're, if you know what your child wants and you're encouraging that nonverbal, you can just say, you know, in a very um, subdued way, you can just give the child um, the natural reinforcer that they're asking for. Um, you don't really need to be really loud or anything like that. I'm just very loud because I can't help myself. But um, um, I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, 
Let's see. And I can definitely share um, the slides and also the, um, the recording. Actually reminds me. Yeah, if you have any other questions um, about sharing the information, you can email me and I can share um, or see to um, sharing uh, recording or materials. Oh, <laughs> okay. So um, I have a request here that um, they wanted me to review uh, the letters in the acronym GRASP. So, yeah, I do not talk about the A, um, which is attending. It is sort of um, built into every single uh, routine or video that I show. Um, attending really um, refers to the looking or the eye contact or, or having that engagement or face-to-face -face with your child. Um, so I, I showed a video of giving, of requesting, of showing and pointing, but attending um, is really when, you know, in the first video, when um, the child requests for mom to blow the pink bubbles. Um, let me see if I can go back to it. <clears throat> it's basically, she's waiting for the child to look at her. And then once she looks, she activates the toy. So that's what attending means. And it's, it's sort of implied in every single routine. Um, that's why I always talked about um, being face to face and in the spotlight of attention of your child, uh, as opposed to being in the other, in the, uh, in the other corner of the room. And we, you know, I, I made that mistake too, when I was, when, when my kids were little, it's like, okay, let's play. But then I would be not a face to face, I would be like far away. And you know that you need to get that engagement going. So it's important to get that face to face. And um, you're not always gonna get the eye contact, but you're gonna work towards that. <clears throat> okay, so um, with that, I think I'm gonna, um, I'm going to, uh, stop the recording.